Hello everybody, welcome back to the 20th lecture of the series on the Fiddick Fed Book 2017. Today's lecture we will look at section 17 which deals with care of works and indemnities. Uh, we will look at a total of six clauses, clauses 17.1 through to clause 17.6. So let's jump straight in. Clause 17.1, feel free to uh, read through the whole thing, deals with the responsibility of care of the works. Now, we have covered parts of uh, this clause in various other sections, but this clause basically summarizes various things related to the contractor's responsibility for the care of the work. Basically states that from the commencement date, we contractors take full responsibility of the project, the works, the materials, our documents, etc., etc. And this responsibility continues from the commencement date till the completion date date so our responsibility starts from the project commencement and continues until we get the certificate of completion that is the taking over certificate in cases when the contract is terminated early our responsibility ends then and there and if there are any damages that happen during this period to the project to the works then it is our responsibility as contractors to rectify this damage at our own cost. The practical implications are very simple that we contractors bear all the risk for uh, damages and losses during the construction period and the responsibility gets transferred to the employer only after the taking over certificate is issued and a couple others feel free to read through them. Let's take an example. For example, there's a hospital project ongoing. We're building a hospital and the roof collapses due to, uh, yeah, we had not provided proper temporary supports. Since this incident happens before the taking over certificate is issued, the responsibility lies with us contractors. And therefore, we will repair this and rectify this at our own expense. Clause 17.2 is liability for care of the works. Feel free to read through the whole thing. So what this clause basically says that we contractors, we remain uh, responsible for any damages that happen unless this damage happens due to reasons that are beyond our control. This can be a war, this can be unforeseen natural circumstances, this can be an earthquake or a design error from the employer's part. So all of these things are not in my control as a contractor and if a damage happens as a result of these reasons, I as a contractor am not liable in this case and sometimes what happens is the a damage happens and the responsibility lies partially with us partially with the employer we'll take an example in a minute in this case we are entitled to partial cost recovery let's look at the implications so basically this encourages us contractors to maintain detailed records so that we can prove that something that has happened beyond our control this is actually beyond our control and had got nothing to do with us we as contractors are required to proceed with the rectification works immediately whether it is our fault or no we should proceed with the rectification works immediately and this clause basically has a shared responsibility principle which puts a responsibility uh, with the employer and sometimes with us and sometimes both of us let's take an example for example there is a construction site which gets flooded due to a storm a crazy storm happens now there are two aspects to it number one we had uh, our drainage was improper and number two it's also a event beyond our control so in this case we will be entitled to partial cost recovery and this uh, whole thing will be distributed proportionally and as always the engineer will make a determination of this Clause 17.3 is intellectual and industrial property rights. Now, what this clause uh, says is that sometimes there in a project, sometimes there are claims that third parties make. They state that we have violated intellectual property rights or there was a patent on some product that we are using. Now, what happens is this case, if the issue has caused as a result of the employer's instructions for example the design came from the employer and this particular thing was part of the design in this case the liability rests with the employer and in very simple terms if this is caused by our uh, doings contractors doing the responsibility lies with us contractors there is no rocket science to it now 
if either party the us or the employer we receive such a claim we must notify the other party within 28 days if we this is very 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 important if we fail to notify within this 28 day period the uh, right to be protected is lost so we must make sure in this case we always submit the notices in time and once this notice is given the responsible party which is us or in some cases the employer we can take over the legal process with the third party the implications are simple that we contractors are protected if the issue is caused because of the employer's instructions and we should also bear in mind if we do not notify in time that is within the 28 day period we lose protection and basically it helps us to mitigate and manage the legal risks associated with designs things that are not in our control materials methods etc etc let's take an example very simply for example we have a supplier and they come to us and say that the lighting system is uh, violating their patent so the contractor used this lighting system because it was instructed by the employer as part of the design so this uh, claim must be covered by the employer the legal process will be covered by the employer however we contractors must give the notice within the 28 day period clause 17.4 is indemnities by contractors what this basically mean is indemnity to indemnify means to protect so what this clause basically says is that we contractors are required to protect the employer and their team from third party claims that are related to number one if there's an injury or death that occurs unfortunately during the execution unless it is caused by the employer's fault which is almost never the case uh, if there is a damage to property or part of the works once again due to our negligence and if there is a design responsibility if we contractors are doing the design and it does not meet the intended period we are also in this case required to protect the employer from any and all claims that may arise as a result of this the practical implications are simple we contractors assume the legal risk and the financial responsibility for harm and damage caused during the project due to our actions and this clause basically promotes the culture of safety it encourages us to keep ourselves safe the project safe our workers safe so that we do not uh, encounter any legal issues the example is simple for example a worker from another subcontractor gets injured due to unsafe scaffolding installed by us contractors in this case all the costs legal financial etc etc all of these costs will be borne by us contractors unless the injury was due to the employer's instructions which makes no sense employer will never ask us to install a unsafe scaffolding so uh, yeah the whole responsibility lies with us contractors clause 17.5 is indemnities by employer now the employer also is required to protect us contractors to hold us harmless against any third party claims that may relate to number one the same injury death or uh, property damage caused by the employer's own personnel so there's a construction site and the employer's personnel do something that causes a fatality or an injury in this case the employer must hold us contractors harmless because it had nothing to do with us and also any damages that occur to anything as a result of things that are beyond our control for example a war happens a flood happens an earthquake happens and something uh, harmful happens on site to a person in this case also the responsibility will not be ours and the employer will hold us harmless the implications are simple that it protects us contractors from liability for damages that we don't cause it reinforces the employer's responsibility now to act very very seriously to act very very carefully and to act lawfully so these two clauses 17.4 and 17.5 they sort of share the risk fairly if something is caused by the employer he remains responsible and if something is caused by us contractors we remain responsible and both parties will hold the other party harmless in this case for example the employer's engineer instructed an unsafe 
uh, instruction to remove the scaffolds. For example, we had scaffold or let's say we had formwork installed uh, underneath beams and the employer's engineer forces us to sort of remove the uh, formwork before it is actually safe to do so. Something collapses, whose responsibility is it? It is the employer's responsibility. And in this case, the employer must hold us harmless. But also what we contractors should bear in mind is such instructions if they come, they should never, ever, ever be taken verbally. Make sure all the instructions that you receive are in writing so that you can protect yourself in the court of law. A gentle reminder that if you wish to have lifetime access to these videos, get access to these PowerPoint slides that you see on your screens and a course completion certificate, please make sure you check this course out on Udemy. A uh, discounted course link is in the description below. Clause 17.6 is the last clause of this section, which is shared indemnities. This is fairly repetitive and fairly, fairly simple. So what this clause states is that if something happens as a result of both our actions, if the employer is partially responsible and the contractor is partially responsible, then the indemnity that the protection that each of us have will be reduced proportionally and this determination will be made either by the engineer if it is fairly straightforward or sometimes this determination can be made in the court of law this pertains to clauses 17.2 17.1 and 17.5 so basically this whole section is connected and states the same thing over and over the practical implications are simple that it prevents one party us or the employer from bearing the full responsibility if the other party is also responsible and has contributed to this problem. And it sort of promotes the fairness, it shares the risk proportionally and fairly. Now for example, let's take a complex scenario, there is a fire and the reason for the fire is we have not done installation properly, the employer sub applied equipment was faulty and also there was a lightning strike. So this has various contributing factors, not one party is responsibility, almost all parties are responsible. So in this case, the uh, liability will be split proportionally and this determination once again will be made by an external uh, party, sometimes uh, the court or sometimes the engineer if it is fairly straightforward. That being said, that completes section 17. I hope it was simple and easy. I will see you all soon with section 18. Until then, take care of yourselves and happy building.